Hello everyone, welcome back to Julie at Home. This is my final video in my curriculum series for the 2021-2022 school year. And this is on my Montessori inspired toddler curriculum. I have this year a third grader, a first grader, a toddler. She is two, she will be, she turned two in June. So she'll be two and a half, I guess in December, I think. <laughs> and I also have a baby, he's almost three months right now. So I have done videos already that I posted on my third grade, first grade curriculum, as well as our family subjects. So if you're interested and you can go check those out, they will be linked below in the description box. And those were more Charlotte Mason inspired, but with my toddlers and preschoolers, I really love to use a Montessori approach. It's really how I came to homeschooling as I love the Montessori method. I have a background in going to Montessori schools myself. My sister is a Montessori guide. Um, and so I, I really love the theory in general and um, decided I didn't want to send my little one, my first little one to school. Uh, one, because Montessori schools are very expensive. And two, because there are a couple of things that I don't 100% agree with. Um, the main one being fantasy. I do allow my kids a lot of fantasy play and fantasy books. And in general, that is discouraged in Montessori until they are six and in, you know, um, about first grade level. What I do love about Montessori is perfect for the toddler age. And that is that it really encourages the children to be independent and be able to do things for themselves. At this age, you're going to want the, to let them help a lot and let them try to do as much as they can on their own so that they gain that feeling of independence while you're supervising and teaching them along with them, of course. This is Montessori inspired because really Maria Montessori's um, houses, children's houses, I think they were originally called, um, started at around three years old um, with the three to six primary cycle. And she's two, so she's younger than that cycle. Um, however, there are Montessori toddler programs all over the place now. And we can definitely take some inspiration from the Montessori approach um, both in school and um, in the home. Since I am homeschooling, a lot of this approach is just through our day-to-day -day life. However, I am going to spend a little bit of focus time with my toddler doing her school and work um, each school day. And she's also incorporated it into our family school in a variety of ways. So what I think I'm gonna do is just go subject by subject in Subject sounds really formal. It's not as formal as it sounds, um, but I'm going to go subject by subject through what I'm thinking about for my toddler and how we're going to use it. So first and one of the most important is practical life. Now there will be several different ways I am doing practical life with my two year old this year. And the first is I mentioned having some focused toddler school time and I say school time. I, I, I'm I don't want it to seem too formal, but it is Montessori style with trays that she can take to either a little table we have for her or a work rug, which she already knows how to use. And um, it's, it's things like uh, the tray might have two pitchers with either, um, you know, dry beans or something in them for her to pour back and forth and then eventually she'll be able to do water. It might have uh, little bowls with pom-poms that she can scoop. There's just a variety of different ways you can do this, but it's, it's, um, basically things that really work fine motor skills, but are also things that can be practical use as she grows up. It'll be helpful to know how to use a spoon, how to pour things in from a pitcher. And um, there's also things like, um, we might try lacing cards. Right now we have lacing beads. Um, and what else? She might work up to this year trying to start the button frame and such. I don't know if she'll be ready for that yet. Um, part of, a big part of Montessori is following the child and going at their pace. So um, where we are right now, we'll see where she is on these different activities. And as she seems to have mastered one, I'll take it up to the next level um, and try to incorporate different things. Practical life trays are a great place to do, you know, seasonal or holiday themed uh, items too. So um, like using little, I have these little pumpkins. They're um, different colored pumpkins that I've used for all the kids in these practical life activities. And then they can later be used for math and other things as well. Um, so we will be using that there as our formal trays during our focus school time. Of course, practical life is practical in the home. Uh, we have care of the environment, which she'll be uh, helping clean off her little table that she has, maybe learning to sweep, maybe washing windows. I might just give her like a wet cloth. Um, I actually do that sometimes anyways, because it, it amuses her. She, at this age, they love to help. 
<laughs> she is my little helper and she wants to do what I'm doing. It does not make it easier. Often it makes it harder. Your parents at home will know what I'm talking about. But if we can give her, if we can give them something just a little bit to feel like they're helping, it goes a long way. And if that thing is practical and actually helpful, then that's even better. So I will be showing her some specific things to do. I got her a little uh, like crumb brush for her table so she can use that to wipe the crumbs off of it and put it in the trash. And um, she has a little broom that's her size. And what we'll be doing is putting, you know, a, a square of tape on the floor and having her um, sweep it into the square. And once she's got that down, she can try using a child size dustpan and broom to sweep it and put it in the trash. So things like that. There's, a, oh, a whole bunch of different care of the environment activities you could do. You could do watering plants. Um, you could even do like washing dishes, especially if you have ones that maybe aren't as breakable. Um, so working up at their level with what they seem ready for and are interested in. Um, so that's care of the environment. There's also care of self is a big one at this age. And we've, ar we've already been working on this quite a bit, um, right? When from, <laughs> we're working on this from as soon as they have those abilities to, to do things, to move around on their own, right? Learning, they want to know how to put on their coat themselves and put their socks and shoes on. And if you've had a toddler, you know one of those things is do myself, do myself. Um, they might say it in different ways, but a lot of times they want that independence, um, but then they can get frustrated. So having them do what they can do themselves, like maybe they can just put their arms in themselves um, and then you button it up for them. Or maybe you can roll up the sock for them and help them put it on, they can pull it up the rest of the way. So just any little bit they can do themselves let them do themselves and this also applies to things like washing hands and brushing teeth this is a great time to teach all those things and so this isn't done we're not going to be sitting down at the table doing this this is just part of life and all parents will have to do this but i i think of it as part of my homeschooling and it's part of practical life activities um also cooking i am trying to get back into the habit of making bread weekly and so i'm trying to be aware and conscious of inviting her to participate when I can and other cooking and baking activities just let all the children really participate where they can but um, especially her because she's really this is really a good time for her to participate in those things the next subject is language and I think along with practical life I think these are the most foundational I don't know if I want to say most important because all of them are important in my mind um, but right language there in an age where a lot of them are exploding with language now Again, it's really important to follow the child here because they can be on very different um, paths as far as both their fine motor, gross motor, and language skills. And language, you can even break down to understanding versus speaking. So I had very different experiences in language development with my first two children. And um, this third one seems to be following more on track with my oldest um, at being very verbal very early. So she's already she's um, a little over two and she's definitely putting together long sentences and her words are becoming clearer and everything. So um, I will be doing some of the language stuff earlier than I would have done, than I did with, um, I had one child who was a little farther behind, which is still within the range of normal. Um, we actually did get my son some speech therapy. So this is the age, if, if they're like two, two and a half and they're really behind, it's really helpful to get that intervention now. And a lot of states have amazing programs. So I just wanted to put that out there in case you're in that position. I'm, it's, it's part of language development and, um, and teaching them language. And so if that's necessary, then do that. I'm not at a place where I feel like I need that with my current toddler. And so um, we'll be moving forward with just um, the activities I have planned. So this is mostly also like practical life. There's a lot done just day to day, moment to moment, speaking to them. But I do have a few activities that will be on her shelf um, in the form on you know trays and baskets and such that we will do during her focus time. And uh, the first thing is classified cards, which um, they work up to three part cards for when the children are reading, but at this age, it's really just simple um, matching cards and they're usually in themed sets. So I have several animal sets, um, for example, like farm animals, wild animals, um, I think forest animals, I think I have vehicles, um, I have like a, a nature set where it's things like flower and mountain and sun and moon and things like that. Um, I'm not 100% remembering all of them. Oh, I have different seasonal ones as well that um, are 
they're just pictures of like seasonal scenes and I can't remember if I got them I honestly can't remember where I got them from but if you look online there's some free ones you can find if you're willing to print out and cut them and that's what I did with a lot of these and I think Montessori print shop sells some as well I'll I'll link that below as well oh let me also say I will link below pl great places to get resources in the description box below um, including some of the practical life like small things that you might want so classified cards so I wouldn't put all these out at once I would just have um, either start with you know maybe five of each from a from a certain theme and then you can work your way up um, of just the matching cards and then they can put them out and they can match them and you show them how to do this in kind of an orderly fashion on the work rug and you also talk about what it is and what you see as you go so that's how this is a language experience it's also helping them classify their world um, so that's that's kind of the purpose of this moving um, that, that's kind of the purpose of this at this young age and they'll I think continue to do exercises with them in the classroom for the three to six primary period in a Montessori school but that's how I use the classified cards I will also start with her uh, playing with some of the sound objects so um, I will link here above and below my Montessori, how to teach reading the Montessori way videos. I'll link the first one, then you can check them all out. And the first formal step to learning to read is teaching the children that words are made up of different sounds through the sound game. And I use little objects to do this a lot. We also play games beyond that. Um, but I like to introduce them to these little objects first and this is the perfect age to do that she's got a lot of words she knows what a lot of these things are but I want to make sure that she knows what all the objects are so that when we start the sound game she's prepared um, so I will take out just one little sound object box at a time and I will name them and we'll talk about them and um, for example I think my box has a vacuum in it and so we might talk about what the vacuum does and maybe it makes a vroom sound or whatever sound she thinks of um, and just like we're using language even more as we're discussing these. My children also like to play with them. And my, my rule for this is that after we've done the activity, then they can play with it for a short amount of time, keeping them on the work rack and then they need to be put away. I don't let them take these objects like around the house because they'll just get lost. Also, if you have a baby like I do, they can be a choking hazard, so that's no good. Um, and I would also mention if you have a toddler that's putting a lot of things in their mouths, please be aware of that with Montessori activities. Um, a lot of these activities that are on her shelf, she only does supervised. Um, she most of the time doesn't stick things in her mouth anymore, so um, I don't have to watch her quite as closely. But if you have one that you need to watch, please be aware of that with all the Montessori materials. So those are the formal, like, on-the-shelf things we'll be doing for language, but of course I'm also going to be reading her lots of books and singing and talking. Um, circle time in our family subject is kind of geared more towards her with poems and songs. I think that's everything for language. Let me quickly mention sensorial. We will not be getting into the formal sensorial Montessori materials until later on. We might get to at the tail end of the school year, things like the... Uh, pink tower and the brown stair and such later on in the school year but for right now I might start with just some matching activities such as color matching and um, shape matching I have like some buttons that are different shapes that you can match um, uh, one favorite is to match um, little objects usually animals with the color tablet so maybe there's like a green frog and um, I don't know like a white sheep and I think we have an orange octopus <laughs> in our set so things like that um, matching them to the correct color has been a favorite with my older kids and I'm sure um, I will set it out again and hopefully she'll enjoy it too um, so that kind of matching we might also get into some matching of things that we can feel like maybe different fabrics or things like that and just sensorial baskets where I give her things that um, you know have different sensory experiences like maybe a pine cone and a soft hairbrush um, and I'm uh, a ball of some sort like I'm kind of <laughs> on the fly not thinking of things right now but you can actually even look up like sensory bag or sensory basket Montessori and it'll give you some ideas that's stuff that you can do for babies as well or younger toddlers a couple more subjects and these will not have anything on her trays or for our formal focus time um, but we'll be doing them in other times one is art she just kind of joins us whenever we do art and I try to make something at her level so um, if the older kids have maybe a more specific assignment let's say we're doing um, one of our artistic pursuits lessons on a renaissance artist 
but we're using paint for it. I will just get her out her paints and let her and let her paint. And I do, um, each of my kids have a set of watercolors, including the toddler at this point. Um, I was just waiting for her to stop putting the paintbrush in her mouth. <laughs> and so now she does that. She, she kind of makes a mess with it. It is what it is, but um, it's really about the process at this age. It's not about the final work at all. I would argue that it's always about the process, um, but definitely at this age especially. She also loves things like coloring and playing with Play-Doh and clay and, and things like that. And so um, we'll be doing that during art times, but also at other times when I just need to keep her occupied, I will pull some of those things out and let her color. Um, she has a special marker set we set aside for when we go out on special occasions because it has a little travel case. Um, and so she loves she loves drawing with those. She loves doing art in general, and it will keep her occupied for a good amount of time. So I'm I'm gonna assume that on many days when we're doing individual school with the big kids, I will have her doing some form of art at the table. Um, and I'm going to try to have different materials to rotate for her to keep her interested in that. Music is also really important, and I don't have anything super formal for her right now. We might try, I think the preschool prodigies program I has has a toddler prodigies now, so I'm going to look at that and I might have her do that a little bit. Um, we'll have to see, I, I don't wanna say I'm gonna work in any formal time though, necessarily. We'll see if she likes it, I guess. Um, but she is around, I sing a lot and we play music and we're gonna be singing during circle time. And then I also have some little toys, like a glockenspiel and, clave sticks and things like that that we may pull out from time to time um, and she's around when we're doing our composer study and hearing her siblings play their piano so she's exposed to it um, I may or may not do anything more formal with her this year but I do think that at least hearing music and maybe singing some songs is a great thing to do at that age. Nature slash outdoor time so pretty much all of the philosophies that I love including Montessori but also Charlotte Mason and Waldorf really emphasize time in nature and outdoor time. And um, so we, tr we try to do that. We have, we are really lucky to have the land that we have. So I can just send my big kids outside. I can take the young ones outside. My goal for right now is to um, try to also get a walk-in. So this is also for me. So what I've been doing recently that I hope to continue in the school year is I, um, I have a double stroller that I've had for many years. I actually am still wearing the baby usually, but I put my toddler in the stroller and wear the baby and I go walk up and down my driveway for about 15 minutes. This may get longer in time depending on the day and how I'm feeling. Um, but since I'm just about three months postpartum, I've worked myself up to 15 minutes at a time. And my driveway is also a bit of a hill. So coming back up <laughs> really kind of wears me out. Um, but we do that and then I let her choose to play for 15 minutes, half an hour, depending on the day and how much time we have. She gets to choose the activity and I would follow her around so that might be baby swing, which her favorite thing to do is swing. Um, I did get the kids a play set this, this spring. Um, so that's been, it was a very good investment thus far. <laughs> they use it almost every day. Um, but she also has like a little tricycle and but she can't really pedal yet, but <laughs> she tries. Um, but any other sort of outdoor things that she's, um, you know, free to do. And then, you know, obviously she comes along with us when we go on hikes and such too. And when we do nature journaling, I'm going to try to include her more and more. She was just kind of outside hanging out with us. And then when we came inside for nature journaling last year, she would either I'd put her down for a nap or she just really wouldn't participate. But this year I'm hoping to at least have her along with us. She, I'm not going to require her to draw anything from nature, but I did end up getting her her own nature notebook this year. We're all starting with fresh notebooks. And um, I got her one so that she felt like she was included. And so she likes to pretend, like she'll tell me sometimes that she's drawing something specifically, not always. And so um, she, might, she might tell me she's drawing something from nature, which would be great. My goal with that is to help her move, uh, I wanna say chronologically, but that's not the right word, through the pages in the correct order, not just jump around. Cause I've realized with both my older children, that's something that I've needed to teach them. So that's kind of my goal with her nature journal, but otherwise to just kind of let her either color or paint, depending on whatever we're doing while we're doing it and just be part of the process. Um, but yes, nature is very important to our homeschool in general. And, and I think getting inside outside is important for everybody. The last thing I wanted to mention isn't so much a subject, but it's free play. I think this is so important for children and especially at such a young age. I know I'm saying all this formal stuff, but most of her time is going to be spent playing. Um, so while we're doing our other subjects, 
or I'm working around the house, she's welcome to come help me. Like I said before, practical life. But often she might just choose to do some her own thing. We have a little play kitchen for her right next to my kitchen. So she likes to pretend to cook and she'll bring me tea and food that she's cooked to, to try. Um, as, and we have, you know, we have plenty of both Montessori based and Waldorf based open ended and, and nice toys for her out in the living room so that, she, and I try to rotate them on a regular basis. And that way she has things that she can play with, you know, either while we're doing school or at other times. Sometimes they all play together. I recently um, gave them all some new play silks um, to just kind of as a, um, to, to regenerate some interest in them. And um, all three of my kids, eight, six, and two, not the baby, I guess I have four now, <laughs> excluding the baby, we're all playing games together with the play silks, which was fantastic to watch. So yes, I think free play and imagination is super important. I have seen them work out, you know, things that they've seen, things that they've read about, things we're learning about in school or they've heard mentioned, I've seen them all working out during their play. And so at this age, I don't see as much like um, I'm magical or I'm a superhero, I see, I do see more of like, I'm doing what mommy and daddy are doing, um, which I think is where Montessori is coming from um, in that realistic play. But I definitely wouldn't limit her to that. And I definitely don't limit our books and stories to that. I think, I think fantasy can be a wonderful thing in a child's life. And I think fantasy can also uh, give an escape from sometimes when the world might seem scary. And also, give like a way to safely more safely process things so sometimes it's easier to process something new or overwhelming when it's in a story about animals or um, magical beings in a far-off land than it might be if it were in a more realistic setting so that's just my opinion i know there'll probably be montessorians who disagree with me and that's perfectly fine um i also am a homeschool and not a traditional montessori school and so things differ in that regards too and um you know i'm a mom with four kids so i'm not always following the strict montessori standards of letting her do everything she can herself. Sometimes we just need to get out the door and so I get her dressed. Um, and sometimes she's kicking and screaming, screaming. And that's just what happens, right? So that's where we are in that. So there you go, my toddler curriculum. This is my final video in the series for this year. So you now know what my plan is for the year. I will take you along and see how it goes. And I may do some more detailed videos on a couple of the subjects. Again, let me know if you have questions below. The baby doesn't get his own video because he's a baby, at least not for right now. I might do a video later on Montessori um, inspired baby toys and kind of um, my Montessori inspiration with him. But again, I am not a purist in any one form. So uh, a lot of that is just um, parenting style and that I find is very personal and something you just kind of have to learn as you go along. If you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps me a lot. And also subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss more videos coming out. I hope you are all doing well and having a wonderful summer or winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And I will talk to you later.